much for joining me for Live from the Library. I am so excited to be here with you today. Again, if you don't know, my name is Librarian Megan and I am from the STEAM team. So the STEAM team usually goes all over Chicago and we visit our friends just like you at their preschools and their daycares and sometimes at the grocery store or maybe at the doctor or the park or a laundromat and sometimes, sometimes even at the library. But I'm not at the library today. I'm at home. I'm at home probably just like you. And so I am using one of my favorite letters. I'm using T for technology to be with you today. So I am using my computer and you might be using your tablet or your phone to watch me. And so we are all using technology. And so that's the T in STEAM. But you know what? Let's go over what the other letters in STEAM stand for too. So I'm going to need some help. So hopefully my friends can help me with my letters. So let's see. Let's see. What is my first letter? Yeah, my first letter is S. So S for science. Can we all say science, friends? Science. Excellent. All right. And my next letter is, oh, oh, we talked about it before. It's the T. It's the technology. So our computers and our tablets and our phones and, you know, all sorts of different things like the lights in our house, our fridge, maybe our coffee makers. Those are all technology too. So let's see. What is my next letter? E, yes, E for engineering. So that's another big long word like technology. So engineers are the people who design and create and think up and then build and sometimes even fix our technology. All right. Let's see. Our next letter is A, yes, A. So A stands for art. So let's hear it. Art? Art. Excellent. So let's see. So mm, which of my friends out there likes painting? I like to paint. How about using markers? Mm, maybe crayons? Ooh, maybe glue? Well, we're going to use some glue. We're going to use some art and some engineering and some technology today. And maybe we'll talk about some science. So we are getting all our letters in, except there is one letter left. What letter could it be? It goes, mm, it's my favorite letter. It is M. So M for math. So knowing our numbers, addition and subtraction, and we can measure time with it. So maybe you are four years old. So you would measure the number of years you are. Um, we have live at the library at 10 o'clock. So measuring time in both hours and years. So we are going to sing my extra special steam song. But first, we got to wake up our clapping hands. So friends, shake out your hands. Shake them out in front. Okay, shake them up high. Shake them down low so that I can't even see them. Ooh, they're low. They're right by my toes. How about out to the side and all around you? And let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can come up. Ooh. Oh, those are some good clapping hands. So we are going to clap one time for each of my letters. We're going to go like this. We're going to go S, P, E, A, M. And then we're going to do that three times and then we'll do a big stretch stretch up to the sky stretch up to the sun to the clouds all right and make a big circle with your arms and we'll sing let's go explore our world awesome so we're going to put those two parts together and librarian megan is going to start and when i put my hands up i want you to clap with me all right let's do it so with science, technology, engineering, art, and math, S-T-E-A-M, 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 let's go explore our world. Good job, friends. I'm so proud of you. So today we are talking 
about science and engineering and technology, and we might be doing some art at the end. All right, so today we are talking about simple machines. So simple machines, what are simple machines? Well, sometimes like it's hard to do certain tasks. And so simple machines are machines, like really, really basic machines that help us achieve those tasks. So we have six simple machines. And you probably see them around you all the time. So our first simple machine is a ramp or an inclined plane. So you might see ramps outside your grocery store or the library or your school. And those are all wonderful ways of helping some of our friends that might need to use wheelchairs or walkers get into buildings easier. They increase accessibility. And so they're, they're a wonderful machine that helps it make it easier to move up a, a hill or an incline to a higher level. And so we also have pulleys. So a pulley, when I think of a pulley, I always think of a well. So if you ever have seen a bucket that goes down into a well and you would use a pulley to raise that bucket up and put filled with water. And so, but maybe you've seen a much bigger pulley. Maybe you've seen a really big pulley that's lifting something very, very heavy, really, really high up, like maybe building materials. So a pulley would be an, a crane. A crane would be a good example of a pulley. So we, so crane, and then you probably haven't seen this, but you probably definitely have used a pulley this way. So if you actually looked, if you opened the doors up to a elevator and the elevator wasn't there and you looked down to where the elevator was, you would probably see a system of pulleys there because pulleys are what raise and draw up our elevator. So we have ramps, pulleys, and then we have a wedge. So a wedge, one of the ways I always think of a wedge is a ax, an ax is an excellent uh, example of a wedge. So it helps to cut things by creating, because it has this kind of shape and that shape kind of goes into the log and it splits it apart like that. So another example of a wedge that you have in your home is, and I hope you're not touching these or using these, I you might be able to see it if your mom shows it to you or your grown up of any, you know, your dad, your aunts, uncles, grandparents, any grown up, maybe a knife. A knife is also an example of a wedge. And so it makes cutting things much easier. So then we also have a screw and a screw is actually a inclined plane that has been wrapped around something. And so we use screws for construction to connect things and hold them and make sure that they're really secure. And now this next one is, I know you see this one all the time. So I'm going to see if you can think of some examples where you see this one. So a wheel and an axle. Where do you see a wheel and an axle? Maybe something you use, something you play with. What could that be? Oh, your bike. Your bike is an example of a wheel and an axle. And a skateboard or roller skates. Or maybe if you have a remote control car or even your parents' car, those are all examples of wheels and axles. And so those are used to help us move places quicker. And last but not least, we have our lever. And that actually brings us to our first book. Our first book is called Just a Little Bit. And there is a lever in here. So I'm going to see if you can find what in here might be our lever. And this book is by Anne Trumpet. Uh, and it's and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger, and we are reading this with permission from Houghton Mifflin. So thank you, Houghton Mifflin. Elephant and mouse were in the park, playing on the slides and swing. Elephant said, let's try the seesaw. All right. So, the slide, 
That's not our lever because the slide is actually an inclined plane. Elephant sat on the, on the downside of the seesaw. Mouse climbed to the very edge of the upside, but nothing happened. <gasps> All right, so this is our lever. Push down, urged Elephant, push down. Mouse pushed down against the board as hard as he could. Still, nothing happened. Along came Giraffe. Let me help you, she said. Giraffe walked up the board and sat next to Mouse. Nothing happened. Mouse's end of the seesaw stayed on the ground. Elephants, sorry. Elephants' end of the seesaw stayed on the ground. Mouse's end stayed in the air. You need just a little bit more help, said Zebra, trotting up the seesaw, and nothing happened. <gasps> oh no. I wonder if they're ever going to get that seesaw to go down. You need just a little bit more help, said Lion, and he pranced up the seesaw. And nothing happened. Everyone together now, urged Elephant, push down. Mouse, giraffe, zebra, and lion pushed down with all their might, but nothing happened. By then, a crowd had gathered to watch. I need just a little bit more help, Elephant called out to them. Let me see what I can do, said Bear, as he lumbered up the seesaw towards them. Mouse, giraffe, zebra, and lion grunted and groaned and grimaced as they pressed down on the board with every last bit of strength. And nothing happened. Oh no, moaned the crowd. Who will help me just a little bit more? Elephant called out to the crowd. How about me? Cried Crocodile. And me, said Mongoose. I'll join the party, called Monkey from the banana tree overhead. She swung down onto Ostrich's back. All right. Do you think that'll be enough? Let's find out. Crocodile, mongoose, monkey, and ostrich climbed onto the seesaw one at a time, and nothing happened. Oh no, moaned the crowd again. <sighs> I don't know if this is ever gonna work out. I, I know what I told you. I know I said that using simple machines makes work easier, but I, I don't know. He'll never get off the ground, somewhat, said someone in the crowd. Well, I don't know if that was very nice to say. Push down, push down, said Elephant. Mouse, giraffe, zebra, lion, bear, crocodile, mongoose, monkey, and ostrich grunted and groaned and grimaced as they all pushed down on the board as hard as they could. But nothing happened. They'll never do it, said the crowd. Let's go. The onlookers had started to move away when a small brown beetle flew down from the sky. For a moment, it hovered above the seesaw. Then it flew straight to Mouse and landed on his head. Down, down, down to the ground went Mouse and the rest of the animals. 
Every little bit helps. Elephant trumpeted from the top of the seesaw. Hooray, 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 cheered the crowd. You know what, I think it's more fun this way because this way it's not just elephant and mouse playing, it's all their friends playing with them. I think it's more fun when you have a big group. With elephant on one side and mouse, giraffe, zebra, lion, bear, crocodile, mongoose, monkey, ostrich, and the small brown beetle. On the other, they all went up and down, up and down, while the crowd cheered and clapped. The end. All right. So that was just a little bit, and we used a lever in it. So the seesaw was our lever. Awesome. So, like, they were all pushing and pushing and pushing and using their weight to get that seesaw to move up and down. Now, that is what, that's actually how we use all our simple machines. We have to use something that we call force. Now I know what you're thinking. I know, I know you're thinking the force and I'm not talking about the force. I'm talking about force and force. Actually, I think Jedi could basically use the force the same way that we use force because it is either a push or a pull. All right. And so I have a special song to help us remember that what force is a push or a pull. And it goes like this. So if you could repeat after me, That'd be great. So it goes, are you a force? Are you a force? Push or pull, push or pull. Moving things all day and night, moving things all day and night, up and down, round and round. All right, let's try that all together. Are you a force? Are you a force? Push or pull. Push or pull, moving things all day and night, moving things all day and night, up and down, round and round. Excellent. So you use force all the time. So I'm going to give you some examples of a push or a pull. And I want to see if you can figure out which one's which, okay? So we are going to, so it's spring, it's baseball season. And we are going to talk about throwing a baseball. All right. So is throwing a push or a pull? Well, as you can tell from me throwing that baseball, it is a push. All right. Now, let's see. If we, if we were at the park, like elephant and mouse were, and we saw a slide and we went down the slide, would that be a push or a pull? Well, maybe somebody could push you on the slide, down the slide, but what's happening is gravity is pulling you down to the ground. So it is a pull. All right, let's stay with that playground and talk about the swings. So the swings, are they a push or a pull? A push or a pull? A push or a pull? Well, that's a trick question because they are a push and a pull. So we are pushing out as we swing out and we are being pulled back by gravity as we swing backwards. So they are, a swing is actually a pull. All right, so let's see. Ooh, this one's easy. So if you were playing a game of tug of war, what would you be doing? Yeah, you'd be pulling, you'd be pulling, definitely. All right, so those are some great examples of using force, a push or a pull. And so I have a special song to help us remember force. So, it, um, so we have to, ooh, but we have to practice our letters again. So let's see, what letter is this? And O, mm-hmm. R, C, and there's that E again, E, all right. So, F-O-R-C-E, awesome.
So our song goes like this. It goes. <laughs> there is a way we make things go and force is its name. Oh, F O R C E F O R C E F O R C E and force is its name. Oh, all right. So you know this song, you know this. It sounds a lot like bingo. So what are we gonna do? We are gonna turn off, turn over our F. And so we are going to focus on our next letters. Ooh, let's move them over. Let's see, let's see them a little bit better. <laughs> Makes this hard. All right, F-O-R-C-E, all right. So, and then we're going to clap for our F, so let's do it. There is a way we make things go and forces are its name, oh, F-O-R-C-E, O-R-C-E, O-R-C-E, and forces its name, oh. All right, let's turn over that O, so we're gonna do two claps. All right, let's do it. There is a way we make things go and forces its name, oh. R-C-E, R-C-E, R-C-E enforces its name. Oh, all right, let's turn over another one. Okay, so now th oh, three claps. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, let's do this. There is a way we make things go and forces its name. Oh, C-E, C-E. C-E enforces its name, oh. All right, turn over that C, and we're gonna say just one letter and four claps. All right, let's do it. There is a way we make things go, enforces its name, oh. E, E, E enforces its name, oh. All right, five claps, everybody. Let's do this. There is a way we make things go and forces its name up. Oh. And forces its name up. Oh. Good job. All right. So we are going to read our next book. And I'm going to see, I'm going to see if you can help me figure out if the animals in this book are doing pushes. Or pulls? Are they, what part of force are they using? All right, let's see. So we are reading Sheep in a Jeep by Nancy Shaw and illustrated by Margot Apple. And this we are also reading with permissions from Hooten Mifflin. So thank you, Hooten Mifflin. Ooh, what simple machine do we see here? A wheel and an axle, yeah. Sheep in a Jeep on a hill that is steep. Ooh. Hmm. Uh-oh, sheep, Jeep won't go. Sheep leap to push the Jeep. Well, obviously, that's a push. What would leaping be? Hmm. They'd be pushing off something, but they'd be coming back down to the ground using gravity. So it's both a push and a pull. Sheep shove, sheep grunt. Sheep don't think to look up front. Uh-oh, wonder what's gonna happen. Oh no, <laughs> the Jeep went down the hill. So it was, what happened? <gasps> it was pulled by gravity. Jeep goes splash, Jeep goes thud. Jeep goes deep into gooey mud. Ugh. I have to take it to the car wash. 
cheap tug. Ooh, so our tug of war was a pull, oh, yeah. Sheep shrug. I guess it just lives in the mud now. Sheep yelp. Sheep get help. Where are they gonna get help from? Yeah, the pigs. I wonder what they're gonna do. Push or pull. Ooh. The pigs push. Jeep comes out. Sheep shout. Sheep cheer. Oh dear. The driver forgets to steer. Oh no. What do you think he's going to steer into? Let's see. Jeep in a heap. Sheep weep. It crashed into a tree. Oh, that's why you got to always pay attention to what's in front of you when you're driving. Sheep sweep the heap. You think sweeping's a push or a pull? Depends. Jeep for sale. Cheap. The end. All right. So friends, we are going to do a fun activity. So you are going to build some technology. So you are going to be engineers. So but first, I have a very important question to ask. I need to know which of my friends wants to be an awesome reader someday. And if you are already an awesome reader, you can always get better. So you can become an even more awesome reader. So raise your hands up high. And there are five things it takes to become an awesome reader, but I am certain you do them all the time. So let's see. So you need to talk. So did we talk about simple machines and force today? Yep, you definitely did that. You need to sing. So did we sing F-O-R-C-E and uh, are you all force? Yeah, yeah, we sang both of those and the steam song. And we're gonna sing one more song. And so we read two books. We read just a little bit and we read Sheep in a Jeep. And then you need to practice your letters and write. So we spelled steam and force. So you are all on top of that. And last but not least, I'm going to need you to play. So the great news is, is what we are going to make, you can totally play with. All right. So that is all five things. So way to go, friends. So our last song goes like this. It goes, talk, sing, read, write, and play. All right, let's do it. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play, makes a reader every day. All right, are you ready to engineer? We are making our very own simple machine. We are making a lever. It's a very special type of lever because we are making a catapult. All right, so I'm gonna just move my camera down like this. So to make our catapult, you can actually use things that you have probably all over at your house. So we're gonna use some popsicle sticks. So you only need six popsicle sticks. I brought some extras just to be on the safe side. So you need six popsicle sticks. You need four rubber bands. I got plenty of rubber bands too. All right. You need a pup. You need some scissors. You need some glue. I'm going to use my hot glue gun. Sorry. There we go. So, if you have a, if you want to use a hot glue gun, I advise you to ask a grown up to help you with that. I'm a grown up, so I get to use the hot glue gun myself. And so, for our first step, we are just going to take four of our popsicle sticks. And you know what? 
Back to the hot glue gun. You don't need the hot glue gun. You can use just regular glue. I just have done this a few times, and so I know that the hot glue gun holds things just a little bit better. So you're gonna take your first four popsicle sticks, and you're just going to stack them up, and then use one of your rubber bands and wrap both sides of your popsicle stick. All right, to keep so that they just stay in place. You could also glue them, but this is a little bit easier. There you go. All right, so for your next two, you're gonna do pretty much the same thing. You're gonna take two of those and you are going to wrap one end. All right. My rubber band is kind of long, so it took me a little while. All right. Now you're gonna open it up like a crocodile and you're going to, it's a little tricky. You're gonna take your four and you're just gonna wedge them in there, all right? And then you're gonna take your last rubber band to hold it in place. You're just going to use it to wrap around, okay. I'm just gonna squeeze that down a little bit. All right, you don't wanna wrap it too, too tight. Okay, so there you go, you're all set. So I'm gonna just take my cup and I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit. So I should have said you need some scissors as well. But if you have a smaller cup, you might not need to cut it down. I an ideal size cup, so if you ever go someplace and they have it so that you can fill up your own little ketchups, that would really be a great size for your catapult. So I'm just cutting mine down just a little bit because it'll make it easier to put it on my catapult. So this is where my hot glue comes in. If you don't have hot glue, not a problem. Just use regular glue. And I'm just gonna take my hot glue Gonna put a little bit of it on the end here. There we go. And I've gotten myself trapped in my hot glue gun. All right, and then I'm just gonna glue my cup on. All right, and like I said, it's best if you have a grown-up help you because you can burn yourself on this glue. Nobody wants that to happen. All right, but it takes. It's way faster to do it that way. All right, so there you go. There is your catapult. So to use your catapult, you need a projectile. Now I would recommend, because we don't wanna hurt anybody else, using something nice and soft. So I have a poof ball, but you could also use something like a cotton ball or something like that. So I'm going to take this part of my catapult and I'm going to pull it back and I am going to let it go and I shot it right at my camera all right let's do it again Boop. or you can try pulling it back from your cup all right so there you go there you go you've made your very own simple machine a lever a little more complicated one to make a catapult and thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I forgot to ask, is this a push or a pull? Well, I'm pulling this, but it's pushing my poop ball. So there you go. So may the force be with you and thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on the third Tuesday of every month. Have a great day. Bye friends.